The logic node is a wonderfully useful but often misunderstood node, or at the very least one that folks struggle to find a use for. It's hard to boil it down to any hard and fast good common place to use it, but at least to start out with it probably helps to think of it as a node that will allow you to create multiple variables based on the interacting levels of some other input variables. In the fundamental section, I speak about ways of thinking about and viewing the idea of the node graph. And one of the things, of course, that I mentioned was that node flows can be very much like flow charts. And that's a good way to think when using the logic node, to work your network as though it were a flow chart. And such a flow chart is precisely what we've got set up here. Um, I've got two integers called walk and quack, and these are the inputs to a network that will decide for me what something is. I have two questions that I'm being asked. Does it walk like a duck and does it quack like a duck? We're going to say in this instance that 1 is yes and 0 is no, and start out by saying that it does indeed both walk and quack like a duck. We can see the result of this is that we have a duck. Now perhaps it doesn't quack like a duck, but it does walk like one. Oh, turns out it's a penguin. What if it neither quacked nor walked like a duck? Probably a suitcase. And on the odd chance that it doesn't walk like a duck, but it does quack like one? It's a quack! Basically, I have two variables here. Each of them has two possible states. Out of that, I get four possible combination states. And using the logic nodes, I'm able to make that correspond to different texture inputs. Now, although I've used integers here, that's just for the very quick and simple example of a couple of simple states. But of course, the inputs to all of this could be anything. Textures, vector components, and the like. So let's now take a look at how we go about building this. First of all, let's see how we're generating the color here. Each of the different images is just plugged into a color position on a gradient. And of course, the input to that gradient is going to be the result of our logic tree. So, we'll pop him over there, ready for it, and let's take a look at what we need. Okay, so the answer to these two questions can either be yes, yes, no, no, yes, no, no, yes. In short, they can both be equal, or they can be unequal to one another. So we'll start there. We grab the logic node, we'll make walk A and quack B, and we'll ask the question, is A equal to B? If true, then the output is going to be delivering a 1, and if false, it's going to be delivering a zero. So straight away, let's plug that into the input. And we see that we get ducks, which is the key one, whose, of course, position here is zero. So that means that the output here is zero. And it's zero because, of course, this is zero, whilst this is one. So they are unequal. I'm going to grab an input spy quickly, because that will come in useful for us whilst we're doing all of this. So we can just see what scalar we're getting as we change the values there. Of course here, both set to 1, and we're getting the suitcase. Reason why, this is now outputting 1, and so we're getting the image at position 1 here, which is the suitcase. So here's something I'm going to do just to start off with, is I'm going to say if true be 0, and if false be 1, because that way, when both are equal, 1, we should get duck, and we do. The downside, of course, is if both are 0, then we also get duck. But we can sort that out with more logic. Let's copy and paste our node there. For input A, we're going to take this walk integer. And for input B, we're going to take the output of our first logic node. And we'll leave it set the same way if true 0, if false 1, with A equal to B being the test condition. And we'll plug its output into our input spy there. So when both of these are 0, or indeed both 1, this output 0, because they are equal, this tests to see if the zero this has output is equal to the value coming from here, which we already said was zero. And in that case, it outputs a zero. This leaves us with duck. That we don't want, so we're going to do it the other way round for this node and set it to one, zero. So what this output effectively tells us is whether or not these are both zero or both one, because both being zero, this outputs zero, which is compared to this 0, and them being equal, we give the output 1. However, if both of these are 1, this still outputs a 0, but this is now receiving a 1 and a 0, which are not equal, and so this outputs 0 instead. So this second node has created the test condition whereby we can determine if these are both 1 or both 0. 
Now we can proceed the full way through this by just chaining and chaining more of these together in this linear fashion to get enough crossovers that we solve for each of the four possible combinations. That's going to be a little tricky to follow if you're new to this. So instead, we'll look at an approach for doing it where things are branched out a little bit. So what we're going to do is create a second. This can be our first mini logic network there. We're going to create a second one. I'm just going to clone my logic node there. Once again, I'm going to make the walk A and the quack B. And what I'm going to ask this time is A greater than B. So for the minute, when he walks but doesn't quack, we get a zero, and when he quacks but doesn't walk, we get a one. And at the same time, when he neither quacks nor walks, we get a one, and when he both quacks and walks, we get a one. So this output basically tells us if he is a walker but not a quacker, or something else. Since we've got that, we'll get the other one, which of course again takes walk A and quack B, and this time asks if A is less than B. Now if he is a quacker but not a walker, we get zero, and any other state, we get one. Or, to put it in terms of the pictures, this is the penguin, walk no quack, this is the quack, quack no walk. Penguin or not, quack or not. What about this one? Well, we're currently set to zero on both, so that's those. What about the other two states? duck or suitcase. Well, this logic network that we created is making that decision. If we plug it to input, we can see that when both are 1, we get duck, which is what we should. And when both are 0, and only of course when both are 0, we get suitcase. So duck or suitcase, penguin or something else, quack or something else. What's the next step? Well, simply to make number values because of course that's what the inputs to our gradient are, each key's position. The position value represents the values that are coming in through the input. So when the input is 0, you get this key. When the input is 1, you get that key, and so on, 2 and 3. So position 2 is the penguin, and position 3 is the quack. So let's look at what I need. Position 2. That needs a walker, who's not a quacker. 1 and 0. This first duck suitcase network delivers 1 when those values are entered. This, which is the penguin network, delivers the value 0. So let's instead switch this 1, 0 instead. It now delivers 1. So when the inputs are in that state, I get a 1 here. I get a 1 here. I need a 2. If you haven't guessed it already, it's an add node. Bingo, I get my penguin. I still get the suitcase if they're both 0. I still get the duck if they're both 1. So now what we need is the quack. So with the quack, the quack is at 1, whilst the walk is at 0. When those are that way round, this delivers a 0. This also delivers a 0, which means that the add here is, of course, delivering a 0. So at the minute, I'm getting duck. So we'll just change this as well. We're asking, is A less than B? Yes, it is. If true, 3. If false, 0. We can then take another add, take this result, add it to that result. So of course that's 0 and 3 when in this state. Plug it in and we get the quack. And there you have it. A nice simple network that lets you switch between various different inputs. And remember of course, you know, you could be mixing any number of things. I'm mixing textures, but you could be mixing scalars or vectors, MDDs, goodness knows what. And that is the logic node for you, how to work through it and turn its outputs into something.